Hey everybody. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday afternoon so far. I'm Chris with Bienville Bites Food Tour. And today we are on our virtual history tour. Uh, we've been trying to do these virtual history tours uh, the last few weeks just to, um, you know, bring you some cool stories. We really miss uh, everybody on our weekly food tours. And so this is a great way for y'all to you know, stay engaged with us and uh, and also to uh, continue to tell some of these really awesome stories that we have here in the city mobile and uh, what's going on brock and uh how's everybody go how's everybody doing i am live i am just outside of gulf quest uh in downtown mobile and i am on the banks of the mobile river and so today we're going to talk a little about a little bit about some of those cool stories from Mobile's history on the banks of the Mobile River, and uh, and so I'm really excited to um, to share that with y'all. Going to give a few minutes just to let everybody kind of to log in, and 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 uh, so hopefully we can um, you know interact. If y'all got any questions, I will definitely be answering those. I do want to thank everybody who has uh, purchased a bites in a bag the last couple of weeks. Um, those have been really awesome. So we partnered with a lot of restaurants and, and shops uh, throughout Mobile, not just downtown, but even uh, even in West Mobile and Midtown. And so we've been able to put some bags together and um, and bring really, really good food from Mobile uh, to your front door, safely and securely, of course. And, uh, and so we definitely appreciate everybody who's done that. And so y'all check back with us again. This week, we'll be, uh, we're gonna be delivering out this next, uh, next Friday and Saturday. So, um, and hopefully we've got some, uh, some Cinco de Mayo plans for you to have some tacos and Mexican that we can deliver. And, uh, and of course, Mother's Day coming up. So, um, but yeah, so I'll go ahead and get started, turn the camera around here. And here we are, the banks of the Mobile River. And I'm here at Cooper Riverside Park, just outside of Gulf Quest right now. Now, the city of Mobile was founded, uh, 1702 by the French. The Lemoyne brothers, D'Iberville and Bienville, were sent over by King Louis XIV to settle this area of the country to establish their French empire uh, that would have been along the Gulf Coast here. You see the mouth of the Mobile River there going into Mobile Bay just in front of me here. And so we're at the very mouth of the Mobile River. Um, but so yeah, the original settlement of Mobile, 27 miles north of where I am right now. Uh, on the banks of the river. It's a place that's now called 27 Mile Bluff. And the the French, you know, had a settlement up there, built a fort where they wanted to control the colony of, of this area of the country along the Gulf Coast. And uh, Fort Louis de la Mobile was the original fort, that is what it was called. Now the name Mobile was uh, uh, from a local Indian tribe that was in this area, uh, the Mobilla Indians. They were a very friendly tribe. You know, they were a very small tribe as well. Probably about 500 uh, total that were in that tribe. Um, they were, you know, often attacked by the Alabama Indians that were in this area. And so, you know, when the French arrived in 1702, they, you know, formed a pretty good partnership. Bienville was, you know, of course, very friendly with the local Indians in this area. And, um, but the, the, the name, you know, they, they all, they, there's, they say that the Mobile term, Mobilla, comes from a Choctaw word meaning to paddle. Uh, so that's where the name Mo, Mobile comes from, Mobilla, Mobilla Indians. Um, the Indians in that area, they assured D'Iberville, you know, that, and Bienville that, that the site would never flood. A 27-mile bluff would never flood. Uh, and so that's where they set up the old site. And... Um, of course, 1711 came, and torrential rains fell that spring and absolutely flooded the town, flooded the old site. And so later on that summer, uh, Bienville decided to um, scout locations for the new town, and this is where he ended up, right here, uh, where we are now. Uh, and so this is where Mobile has been located ever since 1711. Now the river here, you know, the Mobile River, so it's actually a very small, uh, short river, uh, really only about 50 miles long, which is, you know, pretty short, but you know, a lot of other rivers, the Tom Bigby, the Alabama, the Coosa, Black Warrior, 
a lot of those rivers throughout the state of Alabama uh, dump into the Mobile River here. And so, um, you know, causing the Mobile River, Tensaw River Delta, which is really one of the most biodiverse places on earth. Um, and that's really not an understatement. You know, there, there's, we have the largest number of fish species than anywhere on earth. Uh, right here in the Mobile River, the yeah, largest number of turtle species. And even oaks. You know, there's more oaks here than there are uh, any place on Earth. So, I mean, like I said, really one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. Uh, there's a really cool documentary called America's Amazon, uh, which talks about the Mobile Tensaw River Delta. And I highly recommend watching that, especially. Uh, since we had Earth Day this week, and it talks a lot about how, you know, our waters are being harmed. And, of course, we've harmed them through the years, and, uh, you know, even even mentions, I know somebody might ask why the water is so brown. Uh, it even goes into that, you know, it's a very muddy river. Uh, we do a lot of work on this river. Now, the statue here, I want to point out to you, this is D'Iberville. One of the Lemoyne brothers that founded Mobile. Brothers with Bienville. Now, what's really interesting about this statue is 600 miles, the way he is facing, is Havana, Cuba, where there is also a replica statue that's pointing back to Mobile. So, you have to know that, um, you know, Havana and Mobile were very big trade partners. Uh, going back, to our very beginning. Mobile, we would we would import timber and lumber. We'd import cotton. In return, they would, you know, they would send us back salt and tobacco, sugar, things like that, and even recently chicken and poultry. Uh, in recent years. Probably the most important thing that I think is the most you know, the most interesting thing that we've imported to Cuba. Uh, and this might surprise you, this actually does nothing to do with a trade or uh, any kind of textile, uh, but it's actually the game of baseball. Uh, so, in 1860, a couple of Spring Hill College students were studying here uh, at Spring Hill College. They were from Cuba, and um, so on their summer break, they returned back to their home with a baseball and a bat. Uh, they had learned the game here in Mobile during their time, so they took a baseball and a bat back to Cuba, where it has become, you know, of course, a, you know, a national pastime for not just the United States, uh, but also for Cuba. Let's try to walk around here to Cooper Riverside Park. Thank you all for joining us today, this Sunday. We'll talk about a few more... Um, you know, some interesting disasters also that have happened here along the banks of the Mobile River. Of course, Hurricane Katrina, 2005, made landfall right around the Mississippi-Louisiana line. But the most water that's ever entered this river was from the uh, Hurricane Katrina. So I said about 12 foot of water uh, came up the Mobile River during Katrina. And yeah, to, uh, you know, a lot of uh, old Mobilians, you know, Frederick is kind of our, you know, probably trademark hurricane here in Mobile. Uh, I think only about nine foot of water entered Mobile River uh, during Frederick. It was more of a windstorm um, than it was a flood event. Whereas Katrina, you know, we got more, really more, uh, more water than we did wind. Uh, the hurricane in 1906 was also a pretty big hurricane that hit here in the city of Mobile killed, um, it may laugh all right around the alley on Mississippi line, killed about 150 people on the Gulf Coast. Um, and so, I mean, you can imagine, you know, the banks here, the wharves filled with, you know, cotton warehouses would have been located right here. You know, timber was big during that time and all, all those were just completely decimated. So yeah, we've unfortunately had, you know, several disasters as well. Uh, one other disaster 
uh, just after the Civil War. We had there was a uh, explosion uh, just north of town where about 300 people were killed that day. Um, so uh, just north of town, there was an old warehouse, and um, you know, after the City Mobile had surrendered, the Union troops stored a lot of ammunition in this warehouse, and. Um, one day there was a spark, and yeah, you, you can imagine where just uh, thousands and thousands of pounds of ammunition exploded, and it literally rocked the city of Mobile. Um, eight blocks of the city were completely decimated that day, just completely leveled, burned, and um, you know, yeah, like I said, you know, 300 people were killed. You know, a lot of people that were working on the river um, that day uh, were were. It just completely rocked off their boat and, and, and fell into the water. Uh, some even drowned that day. So, you know, really pretty crazy um, if you can think about that. But, um, you know, one of our next stories that we're going to talk about well, I guess I should say, you know, we've been a pretty resilient people, you know, talking about a lot of these disasters and, you know, especially thinking about right now with, you know, everything that's going on. Um, the city of Mobile is not immune to disaster. If you kind of look through our history books, you know, we've been flooded. <laughs> For lack of a better word, our history books have been flooded with disaster. And um, and so, yeah, we'll... we'll, we'll We'll, we'll, we'll return, but, um, you know, I think about one of the most interesting moments of resiliency in the city um, come from a, a community of Africa town. 1808, the slave trade was abolished, and so that meant that no more slaves could be imported from Africa to the United States. But that did not deter, you know, federal law did not deter some people. And so it definitely did not deter a man named Timothy Mayer. He was a wealthy landowner just north of town here in the city of Mobile. And, uh, and so he made a bet, 1860, that he could successfully import uh, African slaves back to the city of Mobile for his personal gain. And uh, so he recruited a captain, William Foster. He had a boat called the Clotilda, and the Clotilda, you know, especially when he had heard that uh, the king of Dahomey uh, was, you know, of course, still participating in slave trade. Uh, William Foster um, was the captain of the Clotilda and went to West Africa and imported 116 men, women, and children back here to the shores of Mobile and the Mobile River majority of those uh, would go on to be slaves to Timothy Mayer himself. He had a lot of land just north of town where present-day Africatown is. And uh, of course, you know, the Civil War was fought and, uh, and the slaves were freed. Uh, but they didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, they were, you know, longing for their hometown of Africa, for their, for their country, to their normal way of life that they grew up with. And so, you know, that was their goal, was to, was to go back to Africa. Um, of course, you know, I guess a few years go by and they realize that, you know, that's really not feasible, costs a lot of money, and, um, you know, you've got to have the resources to get to go to Africa, make the two-week ship ride over there. And so, um, once they realized that that wasn't going to be, that wasn't feasible, they decided to set up their own self-sustaining community, um, and kept a lot of their traditions and called it Africa Town. African Town was the original name. And um, Africa Town still exists. And um, you know, like I said, definitely a resilient people. One notable member of Africa Town was a man named Kujo Kazula Lewis. He lived to be 94 years old. He was a community leader. Um, he was actually one of the ones when um, when they were talking about you know go, going back to Africa. Once they realized they weren't going to be able to go back, Kujo Lewis was one of the main community leaders who went to Mayor 
and ask him for to give us land. Will you give us land so that we can, you know, live on, live off the land here? Of course, Mayer declined and was not going to give away any land for free. That was not going to happen. Uh, so uh, they made an agreement that uh, that, the, that the men and women would work for Mayer, and in, in return, he would give them land uh, for them to live on. And so that was where the beginnings of Africa Town uh, come from. And like I said, Kujo Lewis was certainly a uh, a big part of that. And uh, and if you've been downtown, to uh, we got a restaurant called Kazula. Kujo Lewis is a uh, is still a very prominent uh, mobilian. Uh, and if you go to the, the if you go to the community of Africa Town, you know there's a, a bust of him there, uh, and and a plaque. And so. Um, really cool you know uh, just a couple of years ago um, a outdoorsman writer for the Mobile Register uh, Ben Rains was a um, was was you know floating around the Mobile River and uh, a couple years back which Ben Rains actually I guess coincidentally is also the producer and writer of America's Amazon which I was talking about earlier but um, Ben Rains found the Clotilda he um, it was real uh, the water was really low a couple of years ago uh one one winter and so that allowed him to you know kind of see some things and dig around in some places uh that he thought the clotilda might be now his first uh first attempt at finding the clotilda ended up being unsuccessful um national geographic and the state of alabama determined that it was that the first ship that he found was not the clotilda uh so he kept digging around some more you know kind of got him down a little bit but he kept going and actually uh, found another shipwreck, you know, a wooden boat made of cedar, pine, about 90 foot long, these old boats were, and, uh, and, and they determined that it was the Clotilda. Uh, so it's been found. Uh, the state of Alabama is in control of that project now, and uh, it's estimated that about $10 million are going to be needed to be raised to successfully raise the Clotilda, and, uh, and hopefully, Hopefully with that will, $10 million is a lot of money that I know the state of Alabama doesn't have, but hopefully we can get that going. And, uh, and wouldn't that be incredible if the Clotilda uh, could be raised and here on the banks of the Mobile River. And we can really tell that story, you know, to the world. That would be, that would be really awesome. You know, our, um, our river here, you know, one thing about it, it's not really a pleasure, a river of pleasure, I guess you could say. You know, work has defined the 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 river, the riverscape here. I mean, you can see that with all the cranes and and of course all store right here. But yeah, you know, work and industry have really defined this river, and that's really why the river is here. You know, of course, cotton was the was what really put Mobile on the map early 1800s, so the cotton industry was huge after cotton, you know, timber. And as soon as I say there's not a pleasureful river, here comes somebody going by in a boat. Now you will see boats from time to time. You know, most people uh, are probably going to their, you know, probably been, you go out in the bay. A lot of people, if you see boats on the Mobile River, probably going up to, uh, you know, probably up the upper region of the Delta and uh, where there's a lot of good fishing, of course. And, um, but yeah, you know, talking about, so we went to talk about cotton. We talked about timber. Of course, you know, the, uh, the banana docks also line the wharves uh, of the uh, Mobile River, uh, late 1880s, even up to the 1950s. And uh, so a lot of old Mobilians that are alive now, for sure, remember coming down here to the banana docks. And uh, I've heard some stories of, you know, some, some old Mobilians come down here as kids. And of course, they'd get some free bananas and while they were playing down here. Uh, but it was also where the uh, Brazilian fire ant was successfully imported into the United States, uh, right here through the banana docks of the Mobile River. Um, unfortunately, uh, yep, unfortunately, for sure. Um, paper mills, you know, currently steel mills, chemical plants, uh, all line the Mobile River, you know, as you go up north and go up Highway 43. Uh, but the Mo... Uh, Alabama State Docks, we're the 10th largest port in the United States. Uh, they just recently, the United States, uh, 
you know, Congress has given us a lot of money for us to uh, dig another channel here in the Mobile River and the bay. So, you know, hopefully that'll also widen our port and continue to grow the port here. But um, that's just about all I got for you guys today. Um, I will say, you know, we've got a, uh, you know, talking about pleasure, I think, you know, the future of the river here is definitely bright. Um, you know, I know Visit Mobile has definitely got some plans here, especially for Cuba Riverside Park, to, you know, bring dining and, and, and really make Cooper Riverside Park here an attraction to the city. Um, right here, we've got a, a dock here where, you know, of course, the um, Wild Native gives uh, tours. You can get boat tours throughout the Mobile River, Mobile Bay. They'll take you up into the Delta. Highly recommend that, taking that tour. Uh, also, the Perdido Queen, which is a riverboat cruise we've got right here. They, um, you know, give dinner cruises on the Mobile River. So, hopefully, you know, our, our, our waterfront and our river won't be defined as much as work. Hopefully, we can combine a little pleasure in with that work. And, uh, and I think the two can definitely successfully coexist together. But, um... Thank y'all for watching, hanging out with me today, and uh, we'll be back again next week, next month, next uh, Sunday, one o'clock. We'll uh, have another virtual history tour. I appreciate y'all, and, and y'all keep keep following us along on uh, on Facebook and social media. We got some more bites in the bag coming for you this week, and uh, if anybody's got any questions, again, like I said, I'll I'll, I'll reply to them in the comments, and uh, and we'll see y'all next week. All right.